Hey guys, welcome to this video. And in this video, we're gonna perfectly set up our home page. Okay, one second. So in the last video, we uh, we set up the you know slicing of the uh, title, but I guess 20 is uh, just a um, lot more. We can uh, we can extend it to be a little bit more than just 20. So I would say 40 should be pretty fine for this one. Right, that's pretty cool. So well, that's the thing that we have set up. Now what we'll be doing, uh, we'll just go. I will just go back to where I'm having the get videos stuff. Sure, we need to get the comments also. So we'll say. Uh, Comments is equal to require model slash comment. Here we're just going to say constant uh, comment on video is going to be total comments are going to be equal to. Oh, wait. Mm. What do we have here? Comments. Okay, so we're just gonna say await. Okay, so that's the one thing. Constant <coughs> video is going to be this one, and once it fires the video, the video we're gonna have a lot of videos right there. So we need the comments for all of the videos one by one. Well, there's another confusion. It's just this scenario, really just same like we had before for the normal one. So here we have two solutions to do: either we just insert total comments somewhere inside the video itself, or we just do what? Um, let me think about this one. Let's do the solution number one. Okay, let's just do the same thing. Let me just for comments type string. Why is true? Okay, so I'm gonna go to the video plot section when we're just actually creating a video. Quite is not true. Total comment is going to be okay. Good. Got the total comments in here, that's good. So what exactly we can do now, we can just go to next.js in the comment section where I just said zero. Here I can just say total comments. Okay, great. Now we need another one, we need one more thing. So basically what we need in the video section here, in the video model, we need to have a video ID. So, well the thing is, if we're just going to keep the video actual ID as the ID of the east log or the URL, maybe someone tried to delete or something, you know, <coughs> maybe someone tried to actually use that thing as to get the whole information of the video, something like that and then get the user ID of using that and then try to use it in the wrong way so what we're gonna do instead I'm um, thinking to do something else maybe like have a specific video ID like this video ID is going to be okay Default it's going to be something. Can we just say default it's going to be 
some random UUID or something like that. I'm not sure though. I mean, we can do that, but yeah, let's see. Constant. You get easy call going to be called. Okay, let's we'll say we're gonna just say. I just have to check it out. I mean, we don't know if it's gonna work or not. If all is going to be required, crypto dot random UID. Okay, I'm not sure if this, this thing is going to work or not because we never saw it working. So I want to say. Just got a moment to become buses, but just gonna quickly explore databases. I'll let it show just delete the whole video. I'm gonna just gonna upload a new video. I have to log in. Uh, let's just upload a new random video. Video has been uploaded. Let's just do a refresh here. Video ID is this thing. I guess it's a little bit long, but the longer the better, right? Let's try to upload another one just to be a little bit more sure. No, that's what I expected it to have. It's going giving them the same video ID. Don't run it. Doesn't really matter because we're just giving it, giving it one time thing right here. Okay, they're just reading one time. They're gonna they're gonna call it every single time. Okay, what do we do? Give me a minute. Minute. So maybe we can use something like. Mongoose dot types dot object ID. I just saw this thing. We can do something like that also. We're assuming that we don't have these things, and we have to say this thing has to be unique. Okay, what do we get? Video ID, this thing. It's more like uh, close to our actual ID, but it's different. It just it's different. I can call it a secure thing. Upload video another time. Something happened. Error occurred. Please try again. Okay. Error occurred. Please try again. When we are we saying this thing error occurred? Please try. I guess they did make the preview. What is this? I don't get it. Oh, we deleted. Uh, well, guys, another thing we found right now. When something happens, we are not deleting the preview also. On the end, we're generating a preview, so we have to delete the preview also. Video preview, and then we delete it. If something happens. So here, what happened here is basically, we were not able to generate a unique ID. That's what I think about it as, right? Video ID was not unique, so it just couldn't. Okay, make it. Let's go to. 
Okay, let's do one thing. We cannot generate the device default, so we need to give it by ourselves. So default is going to be nothing. This is required is true. Require crypto dot random your UID. That's great. This thing is exactly going to fix it. Okay, my bad. We have something in the database. We have to delete it. Upload it. The uploading is done. We need to see somehow. Once we upload the video, uh, we should try to maybe refresh this thing, right? Uh huh. We get a UID if I try to upload another one. We get another UID, and that's great. And that's what we want, right? Good. So what we are gonna do now, we're basically are just going to say, do 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 do. I think here the things are pretty good to me. We're just unlinking the file. Unlinking the file. There's something happened like you see currently. We couldn't just make unique IDs, and we just don't want to keep these files in our st storage anyway. We just want to keep get ri getting rid rid of them anyway. Let's go back to index.js6, and we are having here. Link is going to be like that, but otherwise, now it was going to be backticks slash dollar e dot video ID. It should take us to another page where video ID actually matters. So, if I do a refresh, you can see if I hover over this thing, okay. if I click on it, it takes me to the video ID page. Okay, just like YouTube does. Slash, they're just having the slash watch. Uh, question mark. So basically, here if I, if we click here, they're gonna open the channel, and if we click here, nothing happens exactly. We will just see about that thing later on. But for now, we're just saying if they click anywhere in this video box, the video is going to open. Okay. So I think we are pretty okay till now. So we are actually opening the video. Then I show him the link, that's another thing. But it exactly is just going to open the thing because if we just click on the element, we just inspect it kinda like in inspection. Actually I AHREF is hidden. I mean it's still fine. So now well, let's set up another thing. If someone pours over the video, the preview should be played, right? So what we have to do just to do that, we have to re replace the source of image with our preview. And well, yeah, are we gonna do that? Let me just show you. Da, 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 da. We can. I think I'm thinking just using the lazy load for the image stuff like that. Okay, let's first of all concentrate on the main thing that is going to be our image, our thumbnail. So we're just having this thumbnail for now. It's gonna have its own things, right? I <coughs> mean, of course. I'm gonna have something like here. UUID generator next yes we wanna next yes right UUID generator how we do this <coughs> UUID I'm not sure if we have it installed UUID yet or not 
No. Let's just say npm install uuid because I want to give the you know ID stuff like that a unique ID so that we can actually know what to edit in the future. Okay. We're having this unique UUID right there, version 4, that's great. And this all is gonna go inside uh, the four teammates. Okay, basically we're gonna say um Data ID going to be version four ID generator. That's cool. And this one is going to be this class is going to be um, video preview. How do you do display none in this one? Say display none tailwind display none text inside not great hidden oh hidden although by default we have a hidden class on the second one. I'm on click thing on click. It's gonna get the E and we're gonna get send the E to the mm. We'll just say let's make a new function here. Constant video previews. It's gonna get the E out of the video as I'm gonna say. Video previews element constant data ID Constant data ID is going to be e dot target to be honest, I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what they're gonna show to us to us. Maybe an error, maybe a bunch of errors, maybe something that's bad. In the server we have different data ID, in the client we have different data ID. I get it. So in the server they're generating a different data ID, in the client they're generating a different data ID. So what do we do for that one? Well, let me just see this one. Returning this version 4. How about, how about this thing? <coughs> Let's not get any ad, unique ID. Let's see. You don't, video ID is going to be its unique ID anyway. So basically, we don't even need to define it. You can pass it right there. Uh, but there's a there's a thing. We do need to give it the E also. 
here we have the E okay, element. Let's give it this element. Let's say give the video ID and give it the element. Or just basically give it the element. We don't need to deal with the video ID anyway, right? Holy crap. Here's the console log E dot target. Not exactly on click, I'll say. On mouse enter. Okay, that's good. We get this base image thing. So what we get returned? Title is called Elder Realm. We get the image class. Image class is called this. I was hoping to see both the mates, but we get to see only one. Well, that's not a, as we what we expected. We'll say e dot thumbnail name. No e dot. Let's go to video preview. Okay, just giving us this thumbnail thing back. Uh, a dot all the dot. Next sibling. Holy crap! E dot target. We got the e dot element of target. This one. But I want to get the both image. We have to wrap them in another div. Okay, what is this shit? Okay. Well, that's unexpected. I guess this uh mouse enter effect was only been applied to the thumbnail, right? As long as we can see, that's what we can see. Okay, it's being only applied to the thumbnail. We're not sure why, but almost enter effect it's only been applied just give me a moment to figure out alright guys I found a solution what we can do here we can just have an extra attribute added to both of them and this can just be data type is going to be called the thumbnail and this one is going to have a data type of preview and here we can just say and the e If e dot target dot attributes dot data type dot value is being equal to thumbnail, then I want to do something. Otherwise, I'm going to do something else. Okay, so you want to say. If this is the case, then what we wanna do? We wanna say constant el is going to be e dot target just to make it a little bit more easier maybe. We we'll just have a current el dot class list dot add hidden if there it already isn't and our el dot 
next sibling dot dot remove this thing. Not sure if this is going to work. Okay, we can just say next spring here we're gonna here we're gonna say previous V I O US spling dot remove hidden and we're gonna add hidden in this one. I hope this thing actually works. So I just add this thing back. What I wanna do now is basically on mouse enter I'm gonna for now do this thing. So basically what means on mouse enter it'll be only playing this video. I will see about that thing what happens. Okay, nice. Now it's doing what we want. <coughs> what we wanted it to do. So we had this. Let's say video previews. Video preview start, and it's just going to contain this thing. It doesn't need to contain anything because we exactly know what is going to happen when the guy enters whole and previews over the video. He should be played the first video. The thumbnail, thumbnail should get removed, and then we should play the preview. That's what it exactly has to do. And then we have the other function: video preview stop. <coughs> so now do the same thing. But here we're gonna say instead previous dot remove video preview stop. We're gonna have it on mouse enter. On mouse, leave video preview start and video preview stop. Data type, oh, yeah, I mean data type. I mean exactly we don't need this now. We can get rid of them. I hover over, I just go back. If I hover over, it's just going to play this video. I don't want to see the irritating title thing though. Let's get rid of this one. So yeah, that's our function to preview the preview of the video. Okay, nice. Seems pretty good till now. Right, media preview. This thing, this thing. Okay, it's just gonna only work if we preview over this video. Okay, nice. So previous section is probably done. What needs to be done is just basically this thing, uh, this date. In the next video, then we're gonna actually set up the video loading in the next page. Okay, so preview is done. Now we have to set up this date below. How are we even getting the date? <laughs> I mean, you know. I like to see a wiggle wiggle. It's getting constant. Sort date is going to get the E. Let me try to set it up here first of all. Let date is going to be equal to a new date. Okay, 7 July 10.42. Yeah, it's the old time, right? Let current date, C date is going to be.
dot get to match that date when we created it. That current date is going to be new date, which is going to be now current date. So we have those three things: our old date and the C date. So if I do this date, it's going to be shown this. If I do C date, it shows me this. So now we need to get the difference between both of them. Say so that diff date is going to be the difference date. Day difference is going to be date minus C. Or we can say C date minus date DD is this much. Now we can just say this much is the current is what we get. This is going to be in milliseconds. So we can just say the DD is going to be whatever we have there. We need to make convert it into seconds. Or we can just keep the DD right there. No, convert it into seconds at least. And DD is this. This is the how many seconds difference it was before we uploaded a new video. Okay, that's pretty good. Now what I want to do exactly here is just say make some kind of function. We have the DD, we know that DD is something. I'm going to say constant constant is going to take our date, different date difference. Uh, I guess uh, we will be using our old. So let's do for first of all this thing. Here we'll give e will be our old date. Let's say constant. Okay. Uh, all that is going to be. Get time. Current date is going to be new date dot get time. Constant diff is going to be diff second is going to be old date. Actually, it's current date minus old date divided by one thousand. So we can convert milliseconds into seconds. Good. Now we get we had something in the video of load thing. Estimated date function. I mean it's not what we exactly want, but it can help us though. Let's say second, something like that. So we are having the date, day value, hour value, minute value, second value. All right. But here the things will change a little bit. Let's say it's one year old. We don't want to say it's one year old five. One year old, five days, one year, five day, five months, three days old. We don't want to say, yeah, it's one year old. It's not your thing that how old it is, it? it's just one year old, okay? We have to say something like that, just. Let's just a few functions here. Week is going to be it is six thousand multiplied by seven. That means seven days. Then we have the month value. Multiply by 30, which means 30 days. Well, exactly, it depends. 30 days or 31 days, right? Let's just say 30 days for now. 
Then we have the year which has 365 days. I mean, it can also depend, so yeah, let's just give it one up. So, what are we going to say? I'm going to say if your is not equal to zero, greater than zero, then I want to do something. What's your return? Year if the year is greater than one, then I want to return first of all over year plus yours. I go the wise one year ago. Okay. Do 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 do. Good. One month ago, week, 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 week ago, few weeks ago, then we have the day. Days ago, our 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 hours ago, and we have the minutes. Minutes. Well, I think I have to change a few more things. So basically now we're just only just showing these things specifically, you know, alone. So we don't exactly need to do a person day stuff like that. Okay? But I guess still we have to do something like that maybe. Look, 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 one second. So what I'm thinking is just basically it's just gonna show us say how many after how many seconds we get to see the thing. So Get rid of this person thing because it will never reach this thing if we only sorted out this thing before. Okay, we don't want to subtract or anything else from it. If it is a plan, and just show how many seconds ago. Okay, Mister, I don't know if this thing is going to work. Do. Let's see return. Saw diff diff second. And where are we having the date created at? I don't know how it's going to work. I'll be honest with you guys. Okay, as we expected. 
it doesn't work. Ten years ago. Oh, it's not that old though. I guess it's eleven. What the hell is this? Let's copy my sorry the function. Paste it here. Oh, maybe we have to say it like this. The priority first falls to the multiplication. Great. 44 minutes ago and 43 minutes ago. I mean, not the worst case scenario, but it's working fine. What if I try to upload a video right now? Let's do a refresh. Con does not contain what happened. Client text content did not match. Server said nothing, client said once I gotta go. Oh, I see. Server said 18 seconds ago, and client said 19 seconds ago. Holy crap, this thing is frustrating. Right? So basically, this thing is working pretty fine. Now we have to do only one thing. So maybe. Mm, We need to think about this thing. Calling the saw did function and it's been called two times. First of all, it's going to be going to be rendered on the server side and then on the client side. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So to fix this issue, what we can do, like. The thing is, it's obviously they are will always be telling the truth. The saying is, okay, there's a one second difference. We cannot show this thing to the user. So what we do instead, we just copy this sort of data from here, and instead of saying here sort data, we'll just say yeah, just get the e dot created at, and we will sort the data in the server itself, wherever we're saying uh, get videos here. Well, that's a dot sort data function on the very top. And here I want to say first of all, constant video is going to be await videos dot find more like video in. And then we'll have another one constant video sorted is going to be uh, video in dot map function is going to return as element. Here we're just going to return the uh, video sorted. So well, the thing is, if we try to sort it, we just we just have to return, you know, the edited object. We're going to say, we say return uh, the structure. They spread out all the values of e and re replace created add with sort date. A dot created at so well there is a bug with this thing if you try to do this when we try to sort out the whole data it doesn't even only sort the data they will give us a lot more things like uh, a lot more other function stuff like that that we don't actually need so what we have to say what is a sort e dot underscore doc yep we have to access this thing and that's it what we have to do if we try to check what we get response videos send a response you can see in the response we get back this thing we get created at one hour ago created at one hour ago this thing one hour ago this thing 43 minutes ago now there is no issue it's all perfectly fine you just have to access the 
e dot dot e dot underscore doc and e dot underscore doc and that's all we had to do now if I go to Go to my local host. You can see we have one hour, one hour ago, forty-four minutes ago. Let's try to upload a bigger video. I'll be wrong with a custom thumbnail. Let's just say upload. Okay, processing video. I just let it process its thing. We don't mind it, right? And once it's done, it's gonna upload. Video has been uploaded. I do a refresh here. I can see here we having three seconds ago. I hover over it. It is gonna play me the preview. And now there is not gonna be any clashes, right? All right, fine. Well, that was it for this video. In the next video. We are particularly going to more be more focused on you know not really much on the videos but more more to focus on a uh, few more additional bug fixes. Okay, not actually bug fixes, but like uh, a user can out millions of refresh tokens he, if he just keep you know clearing his catches stuff like that. So we have to have a limit, not actually limit. I mean, say we have to have a point where we just destroy all the refresh tokens that are not actually. Uh, valid anymore so like that and also in the future videos we have to you know lazy load all these things not actually lazy load I'm gonna say we have to do something like you know uh, that we don't if the our database contains millions of videos we don't want the user to see millions of videos like I can already prop it up now reading class list what is this okay it got stuck Okay, that's good. That's good to know we have a bug. I will fix this bug in the next video because I don't have energy to. Well, we'll see you in the next one. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Alrighty, guys. So, now let's make our things much more better. So, you can see they're just calling for our PNGs, our GIFs all the time. Our server is just digging it, right? And we don't, wanna, we don't want this thing to happen. So, what we're going to do instead. Let's say... Okay, this thing is not going to work for now because... We are going to do a few changes, so the changes are going to be like this. This mouse under mouse theme, nothing is going to happen. Or let's just say it happens but does nothing. We're gonna lazy load the image. How we're gonna do it? Just follow. Let's see what I'm gonna do. Also gonna call this one. Loading is equal to lazy. That's all you have to do. Add a loading is equal to lazy. Damn, your code will become lazy loaded. Okay, just give me a moment. Alright. Now, we go a little bit uh, up. We reserve our image, actually, this one. We're gonna say, we've already imported the image, right? Do it like this. Just copy all the things. I'm not sure if the CSS is going to work. We're going to just say the width is going to be around, uh, let's say, 300. Height is going to be around 200. Layout is going to be just form to loading is going to be equal to lazy and we'll just come in this thing out now every single time I refresh my server on the right side okay it is it they're just loading the gifs you can see you may notice this, they're only loading they're loading the gifs in there okay but one second I'm not showing you anything right um how do we sh how do I show you this currently nothing is gonna is showing up here and I'm aware of that because we're just gonna lazy load the GIFs also.
Uh, maybe we need to say layout is not equal to response. Okay, and once we do that, we we'll wrap them in a div. We'll just do by default this by default class is going to be uh, hidden. So you can see here now everything is being loaded pretty fine and I know it's a little smaller. Um, why is it small? Okay, auto doesn't make sense. You might even have to save the fixed height. Uh, okay. Wait for rendering. How about 350? Yep, 350 is pretty okay. You can see. If I do a refresh here, nothing is being loaded from the server. They are not calling for the image, they are not calling for the GIFs. Now why is that so? Because they are the same with in some memory. That's what we have to give it. That's why we have to give it, you know, particular width or stuff like that. So that they don't call it every single damn time then once we do it. Once we have some work to do with it, okay? There we go, we have these images right there and they, they are being lazy loaded, that's great. Now, the things that things have changed a little bit. Now, when I say things have changed a little bit, it means yeah, things have changed a little bit. Once we do, you know, video preview start or video preview stop thing, we're gonna get different targets. Let me just show you that one. I'm about to do e dot target. Only for the in one. I go in, it returns me the div. Now this div has this span. You can have it has the image. So you can see it just all being a lot of crazy stuff going on here. I know, right? So yeah. But it's not just important that it's going to return us the div. It can return us the image itself. You can see. Sometimes it returns the image. Sometimes it returns the image. If I answer like that, it returns it returns the gif. It returns the div. So. What we do, we we make to make a condition basically. Okay, now we know exactly what's happening. So to know more about this thing, we'll just go into the one image section, and you can see this is exactly the div that we had to deal with. We have two divs, which means two images. One is for the image, one is for the preview. So this in preview, we're just saying usually you can we can be in the in the div itself, or we can be uh, in the image section. So if you are in the image section, what do we have to do? We have to say first of all call the parent. First of all, go into the parent section, which is a span. The parent span will say, Yeah, go into my parent and that will be div. And they will say, uh, yeah, go to the next div and remove the property of hidden and add the property of hidden in here. Well I know there's a little bit of complications, but we'll just clear it in a way. Wait a minute, I had checked out one stack overflow and uh, it just had a lot of these no event listeners and either targets rated. Okay, I found it. Great. Here you can see we have a lot of things, so I can just see according to that one. 
So what do we need? We need the parent thing. If we're the div itself, oh no, it's not that thing. Oh yeah, basically. Just give me a minute, minute. Previous playing. First element. Offset parent. Mm. Okay. E dot target dot. How do we know it? what's the tag? Element type. Dot type, we can see, check the type, and uh, there we go. We go to localhost back again. Undefined, huh? Oh, get attribute type. So attributes that look like something like this. We got a source, we got a decoding data image. Give me a minute, okay? Okay, guys, it's called node name. Okay, that's cool. Lower case. Let's give it a try. Image, image. We do like this, we get div. We do like this, we get. Uh, if we do like this, we get div. Here, you can see image, image, div. So now we know that thing, right? You can say on some uh, type is being this. If type is going to be div, I'm going to do something else. If type is going to be image, then I want to do something else. If this is going to be the div, I want to say. Console log e dot target dot uh, parent element okay so we're gonna do the same thing for the image one because we just wanna test it out. Okay, if it's div, we don't wanna get we don't wanna get the parent element. If it's not div, we wanna get the parent element. Let's go try. 
yeah that's great that's great whoa guys congratulations <laughs> well this is this something to congratulate but still you know we're getting the parent element so what do we want we want to get two of twice of the parent element the parent element dot parent element so that will just basically return us the div itself okay we're getting the div that's nice so this is exactly what we wanted we wanted the div right let's say parent element to do dot next sibling uh, next sibling which means basically so we have to say first of all this thing let L is equal to this thing just for reducing the code a little bit we will say if there is nothing like this we are going to just return if otherwise we'll say l dot next spelling dot class list dot okay we are having the video start right remove hidden No, no, we are good. Elder class is uh, dot add property of hidden, and we remove property of uh, hidden from the next sibling. Basically, we're just saying, yeah, play our video. We don't care. Okay. That's probably what we asked, asked for, right? On the type of div, if it's div, we have not set up anything yet, but we need to set up something. So a div means we just want the next div. We'll just say, okay, I'm not able to type anything. If e if e dot target dot next sibling. It's not defined, I want to just return. Otherwise, I will say target.class list.add. Either target.next spinning the class is the dot this thing basically going to do the same thing that we asked for now what we're gonna do we're gonna just copy this whole thing paste the same for here instead of saying next sibling we'll say previous sibling the type is going to be this Oh, I just well, guys, it's working. I know it's a little bit complicated, but we'll find our way through. We said 350. 
range width is going to be 350 for both of them. So it goes like that, and that's great. Now we have laser loaded on every, every single damn thing. Let's try to do it again. You can see we're loading every single damn thing. And in the. Okay, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I hate Windows 11. And in here, in the backend code, we are not calling for anything else. This is the power of lazy loading. And uh, yeah, we are probably done. Nice. Nicely done, guys. That's the power of lazy loading the meets and uh, previews. Okay. Now we were going to add another functionality that's being called as infinite scrolling. As it will, what we'll be adding in the next video. In the next video, we're going to add a function. So basically, what is going to happen if our database contains 1,000 videos, we don't want them. We don't want to directly give the user 1,000 videos. He's not. He's going to take hours to actually, you know, get the data from the server itself. So what we want to do? We want to do intersection observation. We want to use the intersection observation. Basically, we'll only load that many videos from the server on according to the user's width and height of the screen. And once he starts scrolling down, we'll just keep loading more videos according to how much he scrolled down uh, from the server. And that thing is going to manage in a by us. And uh, we'll see how to go around that thing. So I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye bye. And see ya.